as how I made my first million rand. But remember that none of my videos constitute as financial advice. If you are looking for financial advice, please do consult somebody who is certified and registered with the FSCA. So anyway, how I made my first million rand will absolutely blow your mind because it is so simple. Okay, so it's so simple. We've got a sitting here financial fitness bunny, <laughs> Nicolette Mishile, 26 years old. You say it was simple to make your first million. So how do you do it? <laughs> I don't know if simple is the word I should have used <laughs> there now in hindsight. Yeah. But look, uh, Leanne, I think you, what a lot of people try to do is to overcomplicate the process, right? Mm, mm. The rules of money have stayed the rules of money over the years. I mean, I read books like The Richest Man in Babylon, you know, uh, The Millionaire Next Door, and literally the lessons from all those books stay the same. I think what people get fixated on is the amount of money, and then they also get fixated on the actual theory of how do you make the money. And I think what most of us now, living in the economy of now, need to understand is that the rules have not changed you need to live beyond your means you yeah. can't it's not about you know it's it, it, you have to live below what you actually make you can't spend money you don't have right Absolutely. that's number one number two i mean i asked this question at the end of last year i said if you looked at 2018 january to 2018 december and you actually looked at all your bank statements and how much money has actually gone through your bank account yeah, yeah. then you ask yourself the question of that amount of money that's gone through my bank account how much of it did i actually keep mm. and that is the rules of money it's not about how much you make it's about how, how much, much you, you save keep, and how right? much you keep yeah. and then the next question is where are you actually keeping it yeah because money doesn't like to be idle either you have to put it somewhere where money is actually continuously making you more money right yeah, yeah. so i mean when i was 26 i didn't know all this because you also because i think if if we all got taught personal finance and how to manage our money and wealth creation at school, maybe things would look a little bit differently, right? Mm, we probably mm. all wouldn't make the mistakes that we make when we are starting off. Because trust me, I made enough mistakes before I actually realized, you know what? Actually, if you just lived a little bit less than what you actually are making and not get caught in lifestyle inflation, because that's the other thing we get caught in, right? Now I'm making this amount of money. Ooh, now all of a sudden my little car doesn't seem comfortable, right? <laughs> now I got a Move out of. I mean, I rented, guys. I rented up until probably what a few years ago, three years ago. Yeah. And then only did I live by myself. And if you looked at the salary that I was earning at that time, you wouldn't think this person must be renting. Yeah. People used to walk into our apartment with the girl that I was renting and then say, "Wow, guys, you guys don't have furniture." And I'll be like, well, look, I spend 80%, 90% of the time either in my bedroom or at work. Yeah. Do I really need a couch? Yeah, Do to I have this, this everything flashy and yet you can't actually afford this exactly. lifestyle. Because that's a big problem is that a lot of people pretend to have this lifestyle. And I think it's a, it's a, pic, it's a problem of our generation. Yeah. People do things for a picture. Yes. And, and, and when I say a picture, I'm talking, so I can post myself with a brand new car on Instagram exactly. uh, and get as many likes as I can. Mm -hmm. But I cannot afford it. I don't own it. The bank owns it. Exactly. And I've got this noose around my neck. Uh -huh. It's worrying about what the other people are thinking as opposed to what you actually can afford. And, and it's a terrible culture to get wrapped up in. Yeah. Elizabeth White has a YouTube video where she speaks about the crisis of personal finance. And she speaks about that friend that is always popping champagne with you. That mm. friend that is the one who's always recommending vacations. Oh, friend, we should do this this year. We should. That's the friend that's actually struggling at home. Yeah. But they will never show you because on the outside, it looks like they've got it all together, right? But when you sit at home and you actually start to balance your numbers, you realize that I'm actually in a crisis. But instead of stopping yourself and saying, hey, I need to fix this and I need to fix it quickly, you just continue because, and that's the thing. That's why I always tell people I hate motivational speakers and that sounds terrible, but I really can't stand motivational speaking because somebody will motivate you. They'll sit on your shoulder. They'll tell you, you're great. You can do this. Tomorrow, you just go back to routine because yeah. going back to routine is very easy. But the thing about managing your personal finances and the thing about trying to and, and that's the thing I always say, don't get fixated on an amount because people get fixated on an amount and they think just when once I cross over the million, something is going to miraculously happen. No, you've got to keep practicing. It's a continuous effort that you have to keep doing. And it is difficult. In this economy, it is difficult to try as, as, as much as possible to live below your means. So, so what do you do? I mean, very quickly, let's, yeah. let's have a look at the time. So you're earning a salary. Okay, let's say I earn... 5,000 rand a month. Uh -huh. Okay, so I have my expenses, and by that time, blah, 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 everything dwindles. You know, 
how, how do I go about trying to save? I mean, what do I do? First and foremost, you need to find a way. And I know that people will say, they will argue this. You need to find a way in which you can live below 5,000 rand. And that's really all that it is, okay. right? You need to find a way to live. Then I will always say to people, you need to get an additional income. Guys, you, we are all not beyond waiting tables on the weekends. 100%. If it means we need to How many jobs did you work? I was working seven jobs at that time. Wow. And that's the thing that people never wow. ask you. <laughs> you know, they say, seven oh, jobs. You made, yeah, you made the money. How do you do it? And then you say, but this is what I was doing, you know? And people are like, oh, okay. Because that is the unglamorous part of it. Mm. I mean, selling things. People will tell you, oh, I don't like selling. I don't want to deal with people. I want to be trying to convince people to buy things from me. Hey, <laughs> I want a surplus income. So yeah. I, will sell, I will sell anything to you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you've got to do that. I mean, that's this is these are the answers. I mean, these are the things yes. that people need to know. So yeah. live below your means. Don't be scared to take another job. Exactly. I mean, find that job. Do whatever you do. And don't think you're better than anything. Ex and, and the job will not be... The, the same level as the job that you do as a nine to five. Mm. So just because you're nine to five, you're an accountant, a chartered accountant, a lawyer, doesn't mean that you cannot sell. Doesn't mean you can't wait tables. Yeah. I mean, people buy anything these days. People love convenience. You know. I want to. I want to ask you a very important question, mm -hmm. and I think it's it's vital. Black tax. You know. Yeah. So I mean, even you came in here and you said, "Don't ask me for money." No, Please don't, don't ask me. <laughs> I don't have the money. But but the reality is, I mean, you come out and you're speaking like this. Yeah. But you know. What about that? It is a big burden. You know, I, I think, to be quite honest, I, I was lucky enough to, be in a, to come from a family where black tax at that time wasn't a huge thing for me. So it wasn't a big hindrance because uh, luckily for us, my dad was able to take care of us and, and everybody else, right? But right now, black tax is a real thing for yeah. me. I pay for my little sister's school where I need to help my parents. I pay for accommodation. So the reality of black tax is that you need to see it also as family responsibility. But family responsibility is not a tax that you pay every single month. So you need to sit down because you know that the one thing that my father said to me when I first bought my car? He said, do not be sensational. Do not come here and paint a picture to people that you're a certain type of person because then you have to live up to it. Mm -hmm. And when people expect you to live up to it, now you start getting upset and you're saying, ah, where do they think I find all this money? Well, you've given us an impression that you've got the money, right? So my dad always says to us, live a life that is modest enough so people, so you can control how people see you. No, that, that doesn't mean you must stand yourself now and be, you know, fr overly frugal. But live a life in which people understand your boundaries and your expectation. So even at home, if my parents expect me to pay for something or there is some sort of something, I always explain to them, these are my boundaries. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Listen, I think you've given us amazing advice. Nicolette Mishile, social media financial fitness bunny, talking to us about money matters, including how she made her first million. But I don't think that's the story here. It's not about making the million. It's about living not beyond your means, living within or below your means. All right, quick break, and then we've got to say goodbye to you.